Allah mentioned in the Quran, in Sulal Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 31. The Prophet has commanded to say that all those who love Allah, follow me. For Allah will love you and Allah will forgive you. Now if we analyze that we human beings, we too love the other human beings. We love our parents, our father and mother. We love our wives. We love our children. And the reason we love them basically is because these people, these human beings, have done certain favor on us. For example, we love our mother because she bore us in a womb for nine months. She took care of us in childhood. She brought us up. We love our brothers. Either they have given us something or we want something from them. We love the human beings. So in that context, if we calculate the favors Allah has done on us, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 34, that if you count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to add them up. So imagine if we love our parents for the few things they have given us, how much should we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the love differs. We human beings, we will love animals. We love human beings also. But the love of the animals that the human beings have is different on a different level as compared to the love that we have for the human beings. Similarly, the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on a different level as compared to the love we have for the human beings. It is far superior. It is far more on a higher plateau. It is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Fatiha, chapter number one, verse number five. Iyaka na abdu wa iyaka na stain. They alone we worship, they alone we ask for help. We have to only worship him and no one else. Allah says in Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse number 60. You ask me and I will answer your prayer. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 186. O Messenger, when they ask you about me, tell them I am near to them and I will answer their prayers. So all worship should only be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. He is the only one who deserves the worship and no one else. Now let us analyze the purpose of creation from another perspective, from the perspective of the human beings, that what is the purpose of existence in this world? God created us. We came in this world. What is our requirement? What is our purpose of existence? And Allah gives the reply. In Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah says, It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, Allah says, Kullu nafsin Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. And anyone who has been saved from the fire and enters the garden, he would have achieved the objective of this world. For this world is nothing but mere chattels of deception. That means this life of ours in this world is a test for the hereafter. If we obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the next life, we'll get paradise. If we don't obey, we will not get paradise, we'll go to hell. So this life, the purpose of existence, as Allah says, is the test for the hereafter. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 2, that do you think just by saying, we believe, we will let you go? We will surely test you. I Means if you just say, I believe in Allah, I am a Muslim, I am a Mormon. Do you think Allah will let you go? Finish your test is over. Allah says, don't you think we will test you? Just by saying I am a Muslim, just by saying you are a believer, just by saying I submit my will to Almighty God, you will not go scot-free. Allah will surely test you. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, that surely we will test you with fear and hunger, with loss of your lives and of the goods and what you've accumulated in your life and give glad tidings to those who are patient. Allah says he'll test everyone either with fear or with hunger or with loss of life or with goods or the wealth they've accumulated. Allah will test you and Allah tests different people in different ways.